Uh, Hi. All right. Uh, how long have you been playing music like this? Oh, for about uh, no, over tw about twenty years. I'm not an interviewer. I'm uh, just giving I'm you some playing music. I've been playing music for twenty years, twenty-two years actually. How did you get started with this? Next sentence is that exactly. Well, I uh, uh, had a gallery in New York, and uh, it was a uh, sort of media gallery, and I did a theater piece for somebody, and we built instruments or used sheets of steel originally. And uh, out of that hanging steel and stuff like that came the idea to make uh, the steel cello and bow chant. When did you first use the steel cello? 1968 in uh, New York. What? And then actually I uh, um, didn't really do anything uh, with the concept until 1970, when I started a group up in Maine called uh, Central Maine Power Music Company, and the original idea was to build all handmade instruments, but uh, as it turns out, it was the instruments just became decorative because they were just being used uh, uh, in addition to saxophones and stuff like that. It wasn't exactly that. Uh, that's what I wanted, and then so in 19. Seventy-six. I disbanded the group and formed the U.S. Steel Cello Ensemble, which primarily was to explore the possibilities of the steel cello and the bow chime, and then the buzz chime, which I built subsequently. Tell me how your first uh, just to describe the steel cello. A steel cello is a, a eight-foot sheet of steel suspended uh, or suspended on a stand. And the right, on the right-hand corner, uh, is a wire coming from the top right-hand corner to the bottom right-hand corner, and so it, it creates a curve. The uh, uh, the other corner is uh, um, um, fastened uh, right at its longest point, and so it gives a curve. And then the the the, the, the uh, um, the wire can be tightened with a turnbuckle so you can get discreet tuning. I noticed that you play notes on it uh, in scales. Yeah. Can you develop that more a little bit? Right, right. That's, you know, it's, uh, um, I think of the steel cello and the bow chime as a, oh, uh, sort of uh, new instruments. They're like the first violin. When the first, when the violin was first invented, uh, there was not a lot of music associated with it. it it's over the years that uh, music has been written and has been adapted to the violin. So uh, the steel cello is uh, an instrument that is just basically 20 years old. And uh, within it, though, is uh, a wealth of music. And uh, uh, it can act and, I think, uh, be incorporated into uh, orchestras or whatever different uh, musical situations it, it, it has uh, they're tunable both the bow chime and the steel cello is tunable I see the uh, music as American industrial they are the the product of our society and they're, they're I think indigenous American instruments and uh, they really reflect the uh, the sounds of our society and the, uh, you know, engines and drones and stuff like that. Tell me about that particular registry and the uh, engineers you work with. It's a little, just a little part of. Uh, tell me about the, the so-called meaning or the, or the images that you're projecting when you play the instrument. Well, I feel that, uh, you know, the indigenous property of the instruments is that they have this sort of uh, ha uh, Western harmonic tonality, uh, like a brass horn or, you know, they, they, they pr produce this sort of uh, brilliant harmonic uh, metallic sound, you know, and uh, what was the question? about what the image or the metaphor or the what, what, what do you really 
Well, I'm just saying, how, how do you create the messages now? Well, what, how do you, what, are the, what are the voices that you use, and how do you see them as being a voice right now? Well, it's, uh, uh, it's what electronic instruments want to do and really can't. In, 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 in a way that uh, the, the steel cellos can do, and it, it, it creates the, uh, uh, the environment for uh, that sort of futuristic, it's both ancient and, and, and futuristic at the same time. It sort of spans this whole sort of uh, uh, s sense of space and, and, and future and past, and, uh, and I think uh, that's what in is inherent in the sound of the instrument. Now, you know, you can make it also sound like a wooden uh, uh, cello, you know, by standing in the sheet. You can uh, make it, uh, you can damp it, and it has a very sort of a mournful, almost wooden sound. Describe the images that you create to create for people. Um, well, uh, I, you know, one of the pieces that I, you know, play is called Industrial Meditation, and uh, it's uh, it's a uh, um, I'm, you know, influenced by Tibetan chanting. Uh, I went to Tibet and studied Tibetan chanting. No, that's just a joke. <laughs> <laughs> I just listened to a record and uh, practiced for years and years. And there is a sort of a similarity in between the Tibetan and even the, uh, the steel cellos. They have that sort of cry. Also, they sound like the whales. So anyway, I, I just sort of love the the sound of Tibetan chanting and uh, uh, was determined to, uh, to to learn it. So uh, after about five, six, seven years, I was really trying. I finally discovered the trick, and it, it is just a trick. And once you sort of learn how to do it, it's really quite easy. But uh, so when I first started to play the instruments, I would I, I was too afraid to phrase face the audience, I would play with my back to the audience, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, which is, I think, all part of the process of, of music. I feel I'm a, a, a musical uh, idiot. I have no musical background, uh, but I, you know, I'm a ham like everybody else. I want to perform, and so the next best thing was to create your own instrument, and which you can possibly be, be the best at if you, you know, it's your own, so why not? So um, I, uh, you know, it's developed the instruments. It's gone through different changes, and uh, and also over the past twenty years, I've learned, uh, uh, I've uh, uh, developed a certain technical skill, so I can uh, 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 alliterate, or what is that uh, um, in music when you, you know you. Uh, it's like telling a story. So I try to just sort of uh, tell a musical story. I feel, I'm, uh, even though I, I, I'm not an, an educated music person in terms of uh, having gone to composition classes and, uh, and uh, you know, all that kind of stuff, uh, I feel that I've uh, absorbed music through osmosis by virtue of the radios, records, and all that kind of stuff. And uh, so. Uh, my music has the sound of Western uh, American, uh, Western European. I think it has that same sort of feeling to it. So uh, I just sort of imitate <laughs> Beethoven and Bach and all those people <laughs> and have a dream. All right. Uh, I want you to be over in the middle of the instrument, a little bit of a wider shot. I want to pick up the beginning of the interview. What I want to ask you about in a moment is. Um, is how you started the U.S. Steel Cello. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, tell me about um, how you started the U.S. Steel Cello. Well, I started. Which, which number from the Uh-huh. I started the U.S. Steel Cello Ensemble in 1976, and. Uh, 
I wanted to just do a uh, explore in terms of music. Since I don't have a musical background, I, I just feel I wanted, but I love music and I always hit things and uh, love the sound. And, and mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I have to start all over yeah, again. I can't know. stand it. <laughs> I started the U.S. Steel Cello Ensemble in 1976 here in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Uh, I just wanted to explore the possibilities of, uh, you know, just steel instruments. My dream is to have, of course, a whole orchestra of a hundred uh, steel cellos and buzz chimes and bow chimes, and you know, they all make one huge horrendous noise. I'm really into music. I'm into noise. After trying to do music for many, many years, uh, I finally gave up uh, just recently and discovered that uh, when I just make noise, I'm really free to really express myself. So I, I, I don't get inhibited to try to make music. So uh, what I'm really doing is making a lot of noise, but uh, noise uh, uh, has infinite possibilities it can be beautiful noise, it can be ugly noise, it can be frightening noise, it can be romantic noise, uh, you know, which is of course what music is all about, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> You want to do this one? That yeah.